Hello everyone, this is Rex Red. I am here with another fun Daz Studio tutorial. We are live and it says we have an excellent connection. Today I kind of have a surprise for you guys uh, and gals. We're going to talk about a um, setting up your computer for using DAS and <clears throat> fixing problems that <clears throat> you might have and you don't really know about it. <clears throat> so, uh, and I'm just going to give you a few tips and what I will do is I'll get you started and if you run into any problems you can come into the chat or into the leave comments in the in the, my videos any of them because I read all my comments you can leave a comment in the video and I will come in and see if I can give you a prompt and a helpful answer to your inquiry so the first thing you're going to do you're going to ask yourself is how do I know that my computer is how do I know that my computer is performing to its best quality and I just realized I forgot to set up my uh, chat here so I'm gonna just go uh, here and we're going to change the, the this to uh, setting, uh, optimizing PC for DAS Studio. Optimizing PC for DAS Studio and making a scene. And making and making a scene the so what because even what happens when you buy a buy a computer is if you buy a new computer uh chances are if it's something you buy like say uh say something you buy at Walmart that's just sitting there and you or not to just pick on Walmart but say Walmart or Best Buy or you buy it and it's been it, and it's like a Dell or you know some other brand compact computer Chances are the computer is fairly well set up and it should it should be running like it's supposed to. But there's really not any guarantee that that's the case. Because every model, every model of computer that comes out even though it's like say um you know a um I'll, I'll say Packard Bell but they don't even make computers any I don't think they're even in business but say it's a Packard Bell model S52 or something well even within the year that that model comes out there are several versions of that S52 there are there are there's the network version and then there's the version that has double the ram and there's the version that has an extra hard drive and and then the thing is is you can go on the website and you can say well i'd like to have the s52 but i'd like to have this and this and this and that and this and that and once you start doing that then they start pulling parts and putting parts in and changing everything in that computer and there's really no guarantee that you have that that computer is actually going to be running optimally. In fact, when you buy a computer, I would I would assume it's not, okay? That it's not running optimally. So how do you find out if it is running optimally? 
the first thing I would do is run a benchmark. And the way you do that is there's this program here. And it is called... Ba, 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 ba. It's called User Benchmark. And when you run this program, you... Okay, and it's free. And so I would go to Google here and say user benchmark and you go here to this well I would just do this dot com space and what you do is this free download and you go to the free download and it gives it to you and make sure you're at this um, website well are you gonna let me close this down or what not Responding. Cancel. Okay. So make sure you're at userbenchmark.com. Okay. And then install this on your computer and it should put an, a, an icon on your desktop. And when you run this benchmark, okay, we're going to go through this benchmark. You click to launch and it starts to run the benchmark. And you can see that it's testing all the things in your computer that are important, okay? And so this is very, very, very important because if you're going to use DAS Studio and say your processor doesn't have the right drivers or your graphics card doesn't have the right drivers, this will tell you. And if it doesn't, if they don't have the right drivers and they're not running optimally, you're going to get really, you can get so such bad performance out of your computer that you will, that it's, that you, you're getting, it can be so bad it can be down to like 2%. That's how bad, 2 to 2 to 5%. I mean, well, you know, it could be 50%, but it could be so bad and, and there's a good chance that it's actually down to like 2%, that that your computer is only giving you 2% of your of what it's supposed to be doing. I'm having some tea. And if that's the case, then when you go to work in Daz Studio, you're going to get when you go to move things around, it's going to be it's going to hitch. And you're going to be hitching and things are going to be not going to be running smoothly. And so this is only the first part, okay? Because if you run this benchmark on your computer, and now it's up to 70% here, and you run it, now it's going to give you a, a report at the end and tell you how your computer fares. Because what it does, it looks at, at all of the, the components that are supposed to be running correctly. And it compares all those components with the, everybody else in the world, rest of the world. Because it takes your, your benchmark and brings it online and compares it with all the other people who have your, your processor, your chip, your RAM, your all that stuff. And it, so now it's testing the, my, the graphics on my computer. It's running that graphics test, this graphics test, this graphics test. So it's running these graphics tests. It's chest tech testing all of the different aspects of my computer. And so this would be, uh, that would be like particle collision and stuff and many, many particles, uh, the particle fields things like that. It's testing all of these aspects of the computer to see how your computer, how all the parts work. And like I said, when when this is all done, it's going to take me to a web page and show me the report. And it's going to compare all of the stuff in my computer with other people who have the same stuff and say, you know, their computer ran this test much better than yours. So what that means is that there's something that they're doing with their computer, with their parts and all of the stuff that's in their computer, 
that's giving them an edge. And and I would say 90% of the time, it has nothing to do with buying extra parts like water cooling. And it usually just has to do with running the right drivers so that your so that your computer is running the right way so it says it should be done soon it's going through this sustained rights on my hard drives to to test to see if the hard drives are um, running well there there are so once you get this report, that's only the first part, because if you find that your computer scores or laptop scores really, really, really low, then you have to figure out how to fix that. OK, here it is. All right. Now, so my gaming is performance results. Workstation is 121, 221%. So this is, and, and my desktop is 88%, and um, my gaming is 168%. So that is really well. And so this is my benchmark. And I've had a benchmark that was down here, okay? And my computer, and I thought my computer was just running fine, but it wasn't. And so I had to go in for several days and just learn everything I possibly could to get those things running right. Now, it says that my 12 terabyte drive is running way, uh, way below. But you see, this isn't way below. This is way below. This is kind of OK. Um, it's poor. It's running poor. I don't know why, but everybody else is, is running well and mine's running poor. Now, uh, this one is another drive. This is the 18 terabyte. And this one's running, uh, it says, uh, benchmark incomplete. I'm not sure why. Uh, then this one is below expectation. But it's still, uh, it's still 273%, so that's not bad. This one is... It's, uh, you know, if it, score, if it scores here, something's really wrong. If it scores somewhere within this whole group, you're okay. Now, this one here, it's something's really up with this. This is 8 terabyte, but it's 46%. I'm not sure why that was so bad. Now, this is a, uh, a memory, this is my memory kit. And uh, performing below, ensure that dual channel MPX BIOS profile is a enabled. Uh, so there's something wrong with this. And I see now it tells me a little bit about what to do to fix this. How to en enable XMP. So uh, that's a um, something to do. So I'm going to go and open this up, how to enable it. And I'm going to just put this here for, the, for me to... Uh, look at later. Okay, so I know that's in my BIOS, and I um, I will will enable that. The thing is, is I I'm just not sure performing below. So this is at my RAM is at thirty six point five percent. That is not good. Okay, see this it should be somewhere in around here, and so that is a huge problem. Okay. And then when you get up into here, this very the, this is like really great, but there's only a few people that have gotten their RAM up this high, and they, they've probably done something really, really, completely outrageously magical to get their RAM to go up to to perform that at that high of a rate with. Um, and so they probably had to spend a lot of money to get their RAM to go up here. And whoever this is who's like way up here, it's like 214%. I don't know. Maybe uh, by just turning this XMP on, um, it could put me up in here. I'm not sure. But the thing is, is I, what I, I, have eight, I, I have eight RAM chips, and they're all side by side. And I'm afraid if I run this XMP that they could all just kind of heat up 
And so I have a, a fan that sits on can, that I can set on top of them, but I'm not sure how to set that on yet. And so I've not put the fan on to the to the RAM yet. But it's probably something I should do, and then maybe I can overclock the RAM a little bit, and and it would be nice if the it, I would be very happy if I was somewhere in the middle of here, okay? So and that would be a huge jump. That would probably put me into you know this is 114 here, so I don't know what percent is, but it would per certainly 35 percent, six percent is horrible, okay? So th so what what happens is if if you find that if you find that you have a problem with your computer you can you can leave me a message and say oh I checked my processor my in, my processor and it was way down here uh, at like 60% or 60, you know, some kind of thing. Like mine is right there in the middle at 81%. I'm happy with that right now. And right now I I don't have any kind of, okay, it says uh, base clock 3 gigahertz turbo. Uh, at turbo it could be 395. I think I'm at 3, gig, 3 gigahertz. Turbo would put me up to 395. Um, I would love to be at 395 right now with my processor, but all I have right now between my processor and my cooling fan, and I have an air cooling fan, not I don't have a water cooler, is uh, is this thin piece of graphite paper, and I'm waiting for some Honeywell uh, that goop that goes between the processor. I'm waiting for that to come from. China and it's going to take a month to come from China but it's a really nice thick pasty kind of uh, substrate that you can put between the chip and the cooling fan and it's supposed to give me the the best results I don't really want to go boosting my clock up right now until I know until I have some really good something really to to uh, dissipate the heat from the chip very well into the cooling fan. So then I will probably turn this tu turbo boost on and I will probably overclock it a little bit. So we shall see and and but I'm I'm actually happy with the way this is running right now and it's now the I don't see anything that tells me the temperatures here and so that's uh, something that's important and right now I don't really have uh, an app that's telling me the temper temperature of my chip um, and I would love to have something right down like down here in the bottom uh, uh, that would just tell me uh, the temperature the temperature of my graphics cards to my two graphics cards and this is only telling me what's going on with my graphics card. But I have two of them. So I don't know how it... But it's saying right now that my benchmark for my graphics card is outstanding. And it's saying that my chip is excellent. So, but last night, my... my uh, I was right here. Okay? And so what I did was I changed the... I went on the website, found out my motherboard, and went on the website because I always forget what the what you know, the EVGA or something. I can can never remember. It's like something with an F in it and something with a K in it, and it's like I can, I can never remember the name of these things because they got all these numbers and model numbers and stuff. It's just stuff I don't want to have to remember all the time. So I forgot it, and so this is where I'm going to get to part two. And this is a program called Bellarc Advisor, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tell you about Bellarc Advisor. And Bellarc Advisor is, that's B-E-L-A-R-C Advisor, A-D-V-I-S-O-R, Bellarc Advisor. 
and it, I will show you what the web page looks like just so that you don't get to the wrong part. Place B E L A R C Bellark Software Company, Bellark here. Now, Bellark Advisor, I think I've been using this for over 20 years. So um, I maybe, maybe I haven't, okay? But it just says try the demo, and that's what you want to do. It's been free for 20 years. And what you do is you just let it install on your computer. And what this will do is look at your computer, and it will create a report of everything in your computer, every last, every program, every, 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 everything, okay? And uh, it's like this products. We want the Bellark products, Bellark Advisor. This is what we want, okay? You want to go to the products and then click select Bellark Advisor. This is what you want. It says try for free. It's free anyway. Uh, it's only for personal use. And uh, so that part, it's free and So it will tell you the name of the motherboard, the main board in your computer or laptop. It will tell you what kind of chip you have. It'll tell you how much RAM you have. It'll tell you every single thing about your computer. Angus, welcome, welcome, welcome. Say hi to Angus. Hi, Angus. Oh, well, that was nice, Sigmund. Hello. Yes, so uh, this is the Bellark Advisor, and the Bellark Advisor will tell you everything about your computer. So if you, um, and it's Bellark, B-E-L-A-R-C dot com, okay, and then you go to Products, Bellark Advisor, you just click on this, let it install, and then it's going to say, do you want to run this, and you run it, and then it will create a report that you can print out, and if you're going to do a lot of work on your computer, <laughs> Angus says hi, Sigmund. So he says hi back. Um, so, yes, if you're going to, so if if you're going to do a lot of crazy work on your computer, if you're going to go and change this and change that and change this, create a Bellark report of your computer, and then print it out so that you have a hard copy of of everything in your computer so you don't have so you, you you don't have to ask it if you if your computer's down and it's not working right then you don't have to ask it so run the benchmark first and then find out if everything is roughly about in the middle or pretty close to it now the hard drive performance and all of that i'm not sure what to do about that but um these uh when it comes to the and this is uh six sixteen gig six by sixteen gig this is uh what is this right here oh this is yeah see it's saying i've got six sixteen gig and it's like no actually i've got eight and um so uh two of them my computer just no mat no matter what it just won't read the full ram if i put if i put in uh if i put in five uh two chips it only sees one if i put in four chips it only sees two if i put in six chips it only sees th four if i put in eight chips it only sees six so and i don't know why no idea why I've been trying to figure it out for a very long time and not been able to figure it out. And I've changed my motherboard three times. I've changed, bought new RAM, and it still happens. So just no idea. And something tells me it's Windows. Uh, it's starting to look like Windows is doing this. So uh, I don't know. Just no idea what's causing this at all. But that's the way it is. So th this is to get, and so when you're, it's f for rendering, your, you, if you want to work with, with Daz Studio and get the most out of your computer, you have to make sure, because this right here, that's where my, 
this right here, this, well, this second one, that's where my computer performance was yesterday. It was right here. Now it's saying it's right in the middle of this, which is great. Most this I'm right where everybody else is. OK, but I'd love it if I was up here. But but I'll take this. OK, this is much better than this. This 81 is much better than it was. It wasn't 74. It was actually 63. So it was down here. OK, so I'm at 81 percent. And this because because this was so low, this was tanked, okay? So these that's what you're going to have, is you're going to have these kinds of problems. If, if this is low, it's going to cause all kinds of other problems. Now my SSD drive, my 2 terabyte SSD drive, this is my Windows perf performing below expectation, but a whole bunch of peoples are performing like that, so uh, I don't feel so bad. Um, but and and it's saying it's at 185 percent. So, you know, really? So I, I'm not sure why um, it's performing below. It could be something to do with heat. Maybe I don't have the heat uh, being dissipated from it properly. So and that could be a thing. And this is a 12 terabyte hard drive that's not doing now. This isn't doing well at all. So um, I'm not sure why. And this one, it couldn't even. This is my 18 terabyte drive. Not even sure why it couldn't complete that. So. All right, that gives you an idea of what's going on. So now we're back here in Daz studio. Now, I believe I have my camera locked. Yes, I do. So now what we're going to do is go into perspective mode. And oh, there there he is. This is this dude. OK. And so what I thought I would do is find out where he is. And he's right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ultra scene and put the camera in with ultra scene. And then I'm going to take and unlock the camera. Camera. The camera is selected. We're going to go edit, object, lock, unlock. Now the camera is unlocked. And now what I can do is move this entire scene with the camera where I want it to be and it's going to be like over here and rotate it why because he is going to sit on the dock with his buddy edit x translate I guess in the middle of the dock that's I think I want to have them on the edge of the dock and then I'm going to pull this back and turn it a little bit until I find the camera. And I'm going to line up my perspective view so that it's roughly about where. Now, if I go to the camera view, that's almost the same perspective view. Let's see now. Um, I'm not sure how to do that to make my perspective view the same as the camera view. All right, so let's so let's go back to the camera view and see if I can just kind of do this. There's the camera view. Perspective case, so the perspective view is about like this. Where's the camera? And over here. Um, let's go to the camera view and all right well I think that's close enough now we have him in the scene and the scene has been moved 
to where I want it to be. Now, this is an IRA. Let's put some shorts on him. Let's actually go out. Um, okay, now this is going to take a little while for IRA because this is a huge scene. It's got a lot of grass and trees and like a lot of grass and trees and so all right so we have this now the camera we're going to take the camera out of we're going to unparent the camera which is fine and now uh we're going to save this is uh now this is a huge scene swimming. Uh, all right, we'll call it out swimming. And that's uh, for a lack of a more original kind of thing. Now let's put some uh, clothing on Aiden. Um, Okay, now the camera I want to lock again for just for the heck of it right now. So we're going to go here. We're going to go into back out of iRay. And these large scenes are always going to be to, to be hogs and they're going to take a lot of a lot of computing energy. So we're going to go ultra scenery. Where's my camera is up here. Okay, we're going to lock this again. Edit object lock. Okay. Now we can select Aiden and give him some pants. Uh, let's like uh, let's try swim swimsuit. Now, uh, I will, I don't think I have anything for him that's, okay, here's one. For Genesis, eight males. Yeah, this one looks better. Wardrobe. Let's do this one. Now, we have to fit it on him. For Genesis, eight. Face. Tight course now what if we go control L that didn't light up the scene I'm never sure why it works sometimes and it doesn't control L oh no um that's not sure why that okay let's so he's close enough to the center here that I could just move him back a little bit and set him down sitting. So let's rotate him a little bit. And sitting. Now I'm going to show you uh, how fast this computer is. And when I click off of him, this will start, get rid of this swim word. This is showing all of the products. It has to grab the, the, the catalog list. So it's reading my hard drive right now, and that's probably one of the drives that are kind of slow right now. And I might have to look for drivers and figure out why it's so slow. But now that the list is, look how fast this goes. See, I can just scroll down now through this, like, and it just, it occasionally you see a tiny little hiccup but I can just grab a hold of this and scroll right down through it so before it would like I could go through like a page or so and it would hiccup and then stop for a moment and hiccup and stop and hiccup now I can just go right down through this list which is really nice really 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 nice so it's just smooth now now going th through this so I'm going to insert a distant light so my scene has a light. 
and I'm going to look through the distant light and see where we are. And that would be here. So I think I'm going to put the distant light here so it comes through the trees. All right. Now go back to our camera view. Save this again. And let's see what we have here for this distant light. Lumens. Let's go into iRay. wondering if his feet goes in his feet go into the water it looks like if he sits here that they're not that they're just barely going to touch the water okay we're going to go with nine let's see what happens with this let's see if our our light illuminates the scene how well it does our distant light should be pretty good it's not very bright so let's give it another nine I'm about ready to turn the grass off <laughs> because this ultra scenery scene is Okay, that lit it up a little bit. Let's warm it up a little bit. And Okay, make let's make sure now see this is, you know, it's slow because <laughs> I have 50 million pieces of grass here. So if I come into this scene and let's let's turn the grass off so we can just kind of work with the scene. So let's find the grass. Let's go out of here into texture shaded mode. Then let's find this grass. We got pebble layers and we've got the grass layer and we've got this river pebble layer 14,000 river pebbles the river grass grass tufts 3,000 and that should make it this so that this long grass and that should make it so the verge, grass verge, we might as well just turn all these off. River rocks, there's none of those and none of those. And we have the firs layer. We'll leave the trees on so we can see how the light is cutting through the trees. And forest litter. I think we can get rid of the litter and the clover, the daisies. Let's just uh, work with this scene. Now, now when I go into iRay, it should be pretty quick. Well, make a liar out of me. Control zero. Come on, iRay. There we go. There we go. So this now I can actually like go into my parameter view, perspective view and move around a little bit in iRay and it's uh I mean I can zoom in now. This I couldn't do until I optimized my computer. So I couldn't move this at all. So now I can move move around here even with the grass on I can actually move around as well. And notice how quick the eye rate responds back. So it's like, boom, it's already kind of rendered there. So so this is a, an amazing thing right here, being able to do this. 
and move around just freely, just moving around like this. And uh, so let's see. Now we're going to find a pose for him and give him some hair, find a friend for Aiden. And so let's now go up here to default poses. And I love how quickly that works. I'll go into my favorites. Uh, uh, let's see, into scripts. That's my pose converter. So look, let's now go to files, poses, by function. Look how quickly they came up. And we're going to go by function and sitting. So this, you know, I was going to just work on this tonight and then, you know, but then I thought, you know, a lot of the people who are, who are watching these videos, they don't, they don't have a fast computer like this. And so, and I figured it would, you know, it, that this is a way of me sharing this computer so that my computer can become yours. And when I don't come online, then you miss that experience of, of now I'm thinking something romantic. So these are really nice, but I have to have them so they're sitting on the dock. And this would kind of work. But if I'm coming straight at them, uh, see, I'm thinking that they're just leaning towards each other. Like this looks almost perfect, these kind of, these, this kind of pose. Now they've got them on dual levels, which doesn't really work here. So let's see what else we have can find. So it's, I just thought it would be now see scrolling down through this is the breeze. I, I scroll and it moves and that's, it doesn't hesitate. And that's what's really, really nice about this. It's bothered me for a very long time, that hesitation. Now, it's just a little bit of hesitation, but it's not something that just really bothers me. And I will be getting my RAM a little faster. The RAM is the problem with the hesitation right now. So I will be uh, putting that in XMP mode and probably trying to put that fan on the, on the RAM. I'm looking for couples poses. I'll find them. Okay. This one is kind of nice for one of them. Okay, this is Genesis 8, so I have to click on the pose and run the script. This should put him in the pose. This converts that to Genesis 9. And there we go. So we've got him. Okay, now see, this isn't quite... Now, I was thinking I would have him lean against, but there's no interaction. He's like almost like ignoring the other guy by putting his arm here. The arm should go around him. So this is not the pose I want. So we're, let's get him out of, uh, it's close, but it's not what I want. So we got to go into gen, into close that. And let's go into texture shaded again. And we'll undo this. 
will find the right pose. Something that. See, you know, the one where the, he was standing over top of the. See, I'm coming straight at them. So all you'd see was like the back of somebody's head and covering their face. So, so you know, it wouldn't. You wouldn't see. So, I need something that's a side kind of thing. These are all really nice poses, kind of. Uh, sexy poses, I guess you would call them. Let's see, what else have we got here? We're looking for couples poses. We'll find them. Here we go. He loves him. Poses. Now, see, they look like they're... This is for Landon. Okay, this this is what we want. We could do something like this. That, I think this looks a little bit better because it's more of a... It's more of an interaction. Why, uh, this is A, he loves him A, where he's love, he loves him B. I don't see B. Okay, let's go to the product, explore product, poses. Okay, this would this was it. This is DA. Okay, here's A and B. So we have to bring another uh so we'll uh we might as well we'll find that. We know the name of that. So we're gonna go here and create it bring in another character, a Genesis 9 character. So we are going to minimize all of this. And let's go now up to figures. And let's use Kyle. So we have uh, Aiden is, a, I believe, a black man. So we're going to have a white guy with a black guy. And so this will be nice. Uh, I think I'm going to have Kyle lay along because I think Kyle, uh, but I have to resize them. I don't think they're the same height. And I don't want Kyle to be just like really extremely large. Okay, let's put some a bathing suit on on our... So that would be through, we have Kyle, now that would be suit, and we're going to go to default, wardrobe, wardrobe, where is it? We'll put the same kind of suit on them, but well, but I can put different textures on them. Well, I thought I used suit. Maybe it was bathe, bath, swim. Swim is what I use. Swim. This is for Genesis 2. We'll use, we'll go with this one again. I have some textures, I think, for that. So we'll put this on Kyle as well. And this is for Genesis 8 male. And I used it with a tight template. Okay. Now I've got to set them side by side. There we go. And we're going to move him side by side. Well, let's just move them right into the same exact space. And I can tell how tall they are. So they are both actually the same height. I didn't know that. So I think uh, some, they've changed the way. Okay, why rotate? Let's get them so that they're buff, roughly on the same plane as well, too. Why rotate? An X, which would bring him over a little more. Okay. Now let's go back to our poses. He loves him. 
Let's look up him and we'll go into poses. Poses. Where is poses? P O. Poses. There it is. Him. And we're going to have Kyle here. B. I think B would be on the right, but I'm not sure. Let's see what happens when we do. No, that's not. Oh, and it we did I didn't use the right pose thing. So you select the pose. So this would be for Aiden. And we're going to go now to scripts. Okay. He loves him. A. Which one is this? <laughs> Close. Edit undo. We got to do B. Undo. So we got to give him B script. B. There it is. Close. Now that's the right pose. And then we got Kyle. And we're going to go with, he, I guess it doesn't matter as long as I select the right one. A. Close. Now let's put them into place. Kyle. Over here, Kyle. And up a little bit. And then Aiden. Move him back. And down. They are not very symmetrical here. There we go. And let's get a little closer. See what's happening here. Welcome, people. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I think I have to, now you can see that Aiden's hand is going through his chest. So this isn't a perfect pose, but it's okay. Um, let's see. We can fit. We can work with this. Kyle, let's rotate Kyle a little bit. Bring him in. X translate. Okay, and bring him up a little bit so that his hand, and then we can bring this hand up, bend it a little bit maybe. And bring this up a little bit, bend this. Bend that. And we can take this thing. Now, there's a problem with Kyle's hand. It's going right through his belly. Not Kyle's, Aiden's hand. So let's make Kyle disappear for a moment. Fix Aiden's hand. It's going right through his belly. So we got to twist this part of his arm a little. I'm wondering if that, his arm is supposed to go on top of Kyle's hand. Let's see, Kyle. No, or it would go right through it, so it can't. It's got to go underneath it, bend it. No, not bend it, twist. Let's bring the thumb out, bend the thumb out, thumb one. And up. Bend these fingers out. Okay, let's make Kyle disappear again. See this, it's so, this is so much smoother than what I'm used to working with, so. Okay, his other fingers are fine. We just got to bend this finger out so it's not going right through his chest. OK, 
Control L, we do finally have a light, and I'm not sure why now suddenly we have a light. Okay. This finger is going through his chest a little bit. Bend. No, this one. Bend. This one is as well. Okay. At least his hand isn't going. All right. I think I can work with that. Now we can go here with... Let's see if he's actually on the deck. He's not. So we have to move him down so he is on the deck. This is Aiden here. Okay, and then we'll put Kyle back into the scene. Okay, this isn't working. Kyle's got to be moved up and over. Okay. Rotate this. Y rotate like that. Z rotate. Oop. Bend. Twist. I don't know if this is going to work. I got to turn his torso. S twist his torso. Side to side, not twist. Front back. Now I can bring Kyle, Aiden, in a little bit. Like that. I don't want that in so far. Twist it. Twist that. Twist this a little more. There we go. Now he's not sitting on the deck. Neither is his leg. Ben, see, so these are not, these poses are, need a little bit of work, but hey, we can do it. Ben gets us in the ballpark. Now, gotta take and get Kyle here. Okay, bend this hand up. Move Kyle back a little bit. Kyle. Z. X. Okay. 
we're going to move, okay, twist this. All right, I've got to move Aiden back some more. X. Then we can bring his hand bended a little bit. Twist it. Bend it. Twist it. And bring Kyle back a little bit more. Z. And over. There we go. And it looks like he's looking right down at him. What am I doing wrong here? Okay. Twist. And bend and twist and okay, and this hand goes back a little bit. Ends up a little bit. Okay, and the shoulder can go back a little bit. Back. Twist this a little bit. Bend it. Twist. Bend this in a little bit like this. Okay, save this. Now let's look from our camera and see what these guys look like. All right, now I'm going to put them both into the same as Kyle and Aiden. We're going to put them into a group. This is my group. Figures. Figures, okay, and now we can move them down the dock a little bit. All right, let's see what this looks like in iRay. And that's how you do it, people. That's how you do it. So now we're going to give them some hair and, and put a sky in here instead of the gray. Turn the grass back on. So I like this. Um, It'll look nicer rendered large. I mean, we're looking at this little teeny square here, trying to figure this out. So I would like to turn his head. Okay, nine, let's go back here into Val. 
I'd like to turn bound, bend his head so he's looking up more. Let's go back to our perspective view and see what I just did. Probably going right through his hand. Not really. But now he's looking up. What's going on with these fingers? Bend them down. Bend that down. Bring this one up. Bend that down. And this one here. Bend that finger up. Pinky too. And this one goes down. Not sure how his fingers ended up getting so mangled. Bend that up. Okay, looks like we got something going here. Bend that out so we can bend this one in. This one's got to come up. Thumb one. Twist it a little bit. Can't see what I'm doing. Down. Bend it. There we go. Let's use the corporal. Right hand. Metacorpal, bend that down a little bit. Side to side here with this one. Bring that in. Okay, I think that's pretty close, and I'll see what's happening with his hand down here. As long as it's not going right through his ear, one of them is. Okay. going right through his head actually and that out like this twist it bend his hand in OK, 
Okay. That's not bad. Someone. All right, it's going to look a little different once we put some hair here. Okay, back to our camera view. Save this. <clears throat> so the detail. Okay, he's not standing on, so we're going to bend his feet down like this. Maybe they'll actually touch the water. And save that again. Now let's find, I think some mountains in the background would be really nice. I think what we should do is put um, a Ultra Scenery XT in here. So let's go to window panes where is it ultra scenery it might be already in the scene might be here already there it is ultra scenery xt add <coughs> Ooh, that's a big mountain there. Okay, terrain. Um, maximum altitude, let's go 50. And width. Okay, we've got to change. Okay, terrain map. Save location. And that would be up one. Okay, this is called out swimming. Add. Select that directory. Now we gotta update map. Let's change the map. Now, how do we change the map? Resolution, terrain generator, noise. Okay, let's go here. Change the seed. There we go. That's kind of nice. And it's out of the way. Okay, and save this. Then we're going to put, I guess this ground is okay. We'll go down here to terrain, filters, erosion, that's all good. Ecology, biome. We don't want water. And let's go into the biome here. And let's just use these tiny trees. Uh, scale would be point. I don't think zero five is the smallest we can make them. Okay. Maximum altitude. So our land is 50. So we would go maximum altitude would be like 75. 
and minimum altitude is how much? <coughs> minus 25, and this one's minus 25, so we'll, let's go minus 20. Let's go minus 20. We don't need them way down there. Okay, let's do a quick render and see what they look like. Save this again. See what our trees look like. Now we're going to go at 150. We don't need it that big. Render. See what this looks like. What our background mountain looks like. You can't see Ultra scene, Scenery XT except in a, a, in a render. You can't see it in iRay. So you have to actually render it to see what your trees are going to look like. Well, it's still thinking. Here we go. Okay, so there's our our distant trees. They're like very tiny and far away. So that's pretty cool. See how far away? That looks pretty nice. So it just gives us a another layer of something there. And they only they don't go all the way up to the top. They just go here. Okay. So we'll have grass all through here. This will all be grass, but this is going to be kind of bare. All right. Would you like to cancel this? Yes. Let's uh, let's find some hair for these guys because that's just about all they need is some hair. And we need a sky here. Close. Close that. Save this again. I like that. Now, we go to Smart Content, and we're looking for hair. We'll give uh, Kyle some hair first. Let's see, Kyle. No, I guess, which one's Kyle? Kyle, this Aiden's on the right. No, Aiden, that's Aiden, and this one is Kyle. I have to, yeah, Kyle. Okay, we're going to go Kyle, R for right, and Aiden, I think these are right, L for left. Okay, I'm going to give Aiden short hair because uh, I'm not going to give Kyle long hair, but I'm just going to give him the, the, bl the black guy short hair so it doesn't really interfere with Kyle's hand. So there's a method here. We're going to look for hair. Aiden. We might as well do Aiden on the left first. We're going to give him, well I have this hair. That's Genesis 8, Genesis 9 hair. I think it's this default yeah and I can give him something short where's the hair itself okay like something like this we'll try it I don't know why my light keeps getting turned off Okay, let's go and look at it up close. Let's see what it looks like in iRay. That's okay. That works. Looks like it works with his hand and everything, and it matches his beard. So that's that's okay. 
And now let's to get uh, Kyle something here for his head. Kyle. I wonder if something like this would work. Well, maybe Kyle like this. We could give him this beard too. Was this this is for what? Genesis which one? Genesis nine. Okay, so let's give Kyle a beard. Let's give him the hair too. Oh, I may have given him the wrong hair. I did. Cancel. I think it's gonna bring it in here anyway. Hairstyle Genesis. Okay, let's try the this again with the Genesis 9 hair. That works. And they blend. Okay, save this. And now we have to work on a sky. So go back to the camera view. Let's see what this looks like. Well, it's in iray because we got to find a sky anyway. Let's just see what they look like with their hair on in iray. From a distance here. This has been so easy working with this tonight. Yeah, that works really does okay they're I'm gonna have to change at least one of their they got the same exact swim swim pants colors so we'll just change their colors of one of them now what have we got here does that tree look like it's coming through there well we'll see I don't I think it's just a long tree in the back so uh, we need a sky, some kind of sky. So let's go out of here for a moment so we can click on our environment. Let's go here to, let's look at my browse. Let's go look at my sky folder. HDRI all and HDRI JPEGs. What can we give them for a sky? This is pink one, frozen sky. This one's kind of nice, it's pink one. How about this? see what the oop I guess I selected it I wasn't supposed to do that that's future city park we don't want that anyway I don't want to park in the background um, Let's copy this, go up, go here, do a search, and that's what we want right there, that EXR file, turn the dome on, okay, and let's see what it looks like in iRay. This is probably one of the most exciting parts is putting the sky in, I think, because it just 
lights everything. It just me melds the whole picture into into one entity. Oh, look at that. See, that's like perfect. It is kind of perfect. So, um, and then uh, we'll do a real quick render so we can see our other mountain and our trees in, that are in front of us. So we got layers. We got that way, way, way in the back. Let's see, and then we've got this mountain that's kind of close. This almost looks, activate windows. All right, I have to go in, I'm gonna have to activate windows again because I changed my processor. Got a new processor, people. Look at these trees. So this looks really nice now. This is gonna. We don't even have the grass turned on, so we're ready to. We're ready to to try and make a render out of this. Okay. His feet are just touching the water. That's kind of cute. Um, this looks nice. It does. So let's turn the grass on and all and then do a render. See what it looks like with a, would you like to cancel this? Yes. Those little trees look nice in the background. This looks far away. I think I'd like to put take my my distant light and make it a little bit more orange like warmer a little warmer where's the distant light here let's close the figures up there's my distant light oh distant light Come on. It's thinking. I wonder if this is going to close on me. I think I have it saved. Save this. Okay, figures, minimize you, distant light. I'm going to go down here and make you a little bit warmer. Yeah, that's a little warmer. It's kind of more like evening. Uh, and then we'll turn on our, our grass, the daisies, all these things. This, 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 this. Let's go into texture shaded mode and make it a little easier. Turning these things on. And then this, this, that, that, that that and now let's see what it looks like in iray with the grass on and the flowers and That's so fast. Look at that. You can see the little fence going, the little road going out a little bit, but 
this really, that really adds the realism to this. And then when we do a render, let's save this. We do a small render and see what our, because like I said, the this little area that I made here with the mountain only shows up in a render. It doesn't show up in iRay. So we have to do a render to see that. We'll do a small render. Let's see what we've got. Let's see. There's our trees. Those will become very rectify and become very sharp and all the little braids of grass and all. It's very nice. Okay. And one other thing I want to do is change the color of Maybe I'll change his to red or something. Maybe it doesn't have to be red, it's just a different color for pants, for a swimsuit. Okay, so cancel this. There we go. Close this. And we go out of iRay, and then we got to select our character. Let's minimize our ultra scene. Maximize our figure. Kyle is on the right, so I'm going to change. Uh, I think it's easier to change Aiden's. Where is a swimsuit? I'm going to look for some materials. Maybe I bought some materials for them. If not, I'll just give them another different swimsuit. Materials, click the filter. No, I don't see that. That doesn't have anything to do with the swimsuit. Set to materials. Not sure why it brought that up. Okay, well... We'll just find another swimsuit. S W I M. I don't think it really matters that much. Let's find select Aiden. He's on the left, okay. And let's use this one. And I think one of these is good. But we gotta find the the actual wardrobe. This one is good. Let's put that on Aiden. This is Genesis 2. Male. Tight. I think this blue and white and black, it gives him some other color than other than his color. So I think blue is better than red would have been. So now we can take this other swimsuit off. Where is it? It's a summer swimsuit. There we go. He's got a couple stripes, too. That works, I think. And he's got gray. Now let's look at the perspective view and just take a look at this up close and make sure. Yeah, that's fine. And up with his. It looks like he's got a string or something. You can't really see that stuff. And 
So I think it's ready for a render. Camera, save this again. And let's set our render up really high. Oh, I think some, maybe some, some kind of, some mist coming up off the water. Let's find our mist. Props. Okay, let's see what this looks like in iRay. Well, there we go. Well, it's missed, but it's a little bit strong. We need to bring that way down. Let's try one. I just don't want it so pristine clear that it that it, it that it just looks like a, a render. There we go. That's just enough to give it kind of a haziness. So it blends in with the background and that will rectify. All right, save this. I think I'd like to make this fog yellow, though, instead of white. I don't want it to look like a fog. I want it to look like haze. So we go here into this one here. I think it's a scattering multiplier. Instead of gray, we'll make it yellow, and we'll bring it down a little bit like that. Let's see what that does to it. I think it's obscuring. There's more pigment in it right now. So let's go out of here just so I can do it a few things faster. It's working, but it's just let's go into this. Density multiplier and let's go to point. Five point three. Adding more pigment to it made it thicker. Sometimes things aren't linear, you know, they're exponential, depending on what you're doing. <clears throat> Uh, 
there that's that that works it's there but it's just it takes a while and it starts to once it starts to render you see it there and it just gives it a glow a yellow glow something in between us and them so that they're not just like so it doesn't just look like this atmosphereless world where there's just no atmosphere no air it's going to look like it has an air to it a dithering kind of look it dithers the scene and it does it in daz so i don't have to do it in post work you know so that's going to do this for us So I'm going to run this through a render. Now we're going to set the render up large so it's um, I could could give them hair, but I'm not going to do anything. They, they shave. Okay, they're shavers. They like to shave. Or maybe they just don't aren't naturally hairy. I'm not going to do it anything with that. They're far kind of far enough away where it really doesn't matter too much. It's not going to make a huge difference to give to do the hair. If they were a if they were closer, if they were right up in the scene, then I would do more. So I'm going to go into to texture shaded mode while I set the render settings. <coughs> Ten thousand. We're going to go twelve thousand. 12 we're going to go 13,000 oh it won't let me do that until I go here parameter settings use limits we will render it as I'm going to go Thirteen thousand, and we're going to go here to optimization to this. That's up. Okay, rendering is off. Okay, so this we're ready to render. Let's save this again with our render settering settings here, and then we're going to click render see what we have this is going to render everything up close so we're going to really see all the detail in the scene which is what we want to do I have to activate Windows because I put a new processor in my computer I have 18 cores now, 18. So yeah, I, <clears throat> I, I was gonna do this image. I, I had it in my mind as like the two guys on the on the on the wharf on the little little uh, <clears throat> I don't know what that's landing or something. The marina, but I um, and I was just gonna work on it, and I thought you know. There are people out there that don't have these really, really fast computers. And and I think it would be very nice to share mine and to, to share the experience of making this. And so if you're watching this, please like and subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. Be here when I'm doing this. And you can say, oh, I think actually you should make his hair brown instead of you. You can be part of this. We can all work together with this fast computer. And so be here and, and we can experience and learn all of this Daz stuff together. So that's a, um, <clears throat> that's what's really nice is to that, that you know, I I just really think I should share this experience and not just um, 
work in a vacuum. So that's why I'm here. So we're going to now uh, have a very nice render going this render. I don't think I'm going to have to stop this for any reason. So unless I see something just really stick out. But um, look at the trees. Look at this. Wow. Wow, you can see my fog. That's going to... My uh, haze. My yellow haze. Look at the realism here. Wow. These two guys look really nice together. This is beautiful. So how many iterations? We're only on iteration number two. Let's see if this is rendering in uh, in our graphics card. Oh yeah, we're only using half of our memory here. And let's see what the computer PC, what the CPU is doing. It's only using 16% of the CPU. It's using a good amount of the memory right now, 33%, which is one third of the memory. Um, that's kind of surprising, 35%. So if um, I turn that XMP on, it will make this memory much faster. And so whatever this memory is doing, it will do it faster and so possibly it will use less of it because it's doing it so quick that the, the PC can't feed it faster. And so it will just say, oh, I'm all done. And so it will actually be lose using less of the overall memory. That's the idea. So I really have to take out those. I have some, some fans for, for RAM. And I got to try to figure a way to, to fit those fans on the RAM so that I have a gigantic. Uh, I, I just refuse to use a water cooler in my computer. So I have this gigantic air cooler, Nocturna or something, Noct. So, uh, okay, we're still on iteration number two. Why is this taking so long? Something's wrong. Something is very wrong. And so it's using 100% of the graphics card. But something, okay, there's iteration number three. These, this is gigantic. I think I only went to 13,000. Four. <laughs> At this rate, this is going to take a long time. It's all, so it's not rendering in the CPU because it's only using... it. Would, this would be full and my graphics cards would be off if it was rendering... So it's just taking a really long time to render this. I don't doubt it. I've got, we've got a very complex. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Cancel this. I don't think I relegated the I'm going to cancel this render. Something's wrong. It shouldn't be taking this long. And I think what I did was I don't think I relegated the trees to, to only the camera view. And so there are trees all the way around. If you t if you were to run a panorama, you'd see this mountain right here. And if we spun around, you might see it go on for like 10 miles with trees all over it. So 
I have a feeling that's what's wrong here. So we're going to close this down and we're going to go into our Ultra Scenery XT and select this here. Current camera, restrict to current camera. Well, it is restricted then. What's wrong? All right, I can't change the width here. I can't change any of that or else it will change this whole piece of land here. So I guess that's what I'm gonna have to do is put up with this because taking that's a very, very, very long time to render those uh, and that's what I'm gonna have to do because I won't be able to fit this on on a bedspread. This would be nice to have on a bedspread. Um, we got 16 by nine. I think because I'm gonna I'm doing this at 16 by nine, I'm gonna go 10,000. And if I'll make a square like version, uh, uh, maybe a five by four version, render that, and um, it will chop off a little bit on on the edges. Uh, I think I'm going to do this at 10,000 instead. 10,000. Okay, save this. This is our 16 by 9. Because I don't need it 13,000 wide like this. That's like enormously wide. Like for a billboard. Okay, let's see. That's We're just going to have to let it render and take its time. Whatever time it wants to take, we're going to have to let it take. That is what we will do. I have to activate Windows. Activate Windows. Go to Settings to activate Windows. I don't think I'll have a problem with activating it because all I did was change the processor and I didn't change like the name or the login or anything like that. So we'll take a little peruse around the scene before I go. So again, if you, I, I at the beginning of this video, I ta talked to you about optimizing your PC because you, if you're working in DAS and doing 3D renders and you're just assuming that your PC is doing what it's supposed to do don't okay you have to go in you have to benchmark your CD your your computer and make sure that it's running the way it's supposed to run because your computer could be running at two percent and you know when you, you buy it from from something and they say oh well you have to put the DAS NVIDIA experience experience on and you put that on and you th feel like that's all you got to do and considering that your computer probably didn't come with the NVIDIA experience on it there's a lot of other things that it probably didn't come with and those things optimize your computer and can make your computer move from from producing two percent worth of rendering up to you know probably 50 60 70 percent and that's where you want to be um, for per you want your computer performance at the highest it can be. So run the benchmark on your computer and that will tell you if your processor and your RAM and all of those are. And they don't have to be at 100 percent, but 70 percent, 60 percent, even 60 percent is pretty low. So I would say 70 or 80 percent is really where you want to be with your uh processor and your graphics card and all of that so 
run that. And if you're not at 70 percent and you decide to start and then then I would uh, I would install Bellarc Advisor and I tell tell you about Bellarc Advisor at the beginning of this. I would install Bellarc Advisor and then uh, look at your look at your that that will tell you all of the components in your computer and the certain drivers and things like that so then if you go and you realize and you say oh my processor isn't running white what do I do you can leave a, a comment down in the comment section and say I'm trying I'm all my I only scored like 60 percent on the benchmark test and it says my processor isn't running right and then you can leave a comment like that down in and I will help you get your processor see if see if there's some things I can suggest to you and to get your processor up and running at you know probably the most we'll be able to do is 80 percent unless you want to put a lot of money into water cooling and and over uh, clocking your processor and things like that that's a whole different thing so but just getting it to run like at 60 70 percent that's really about where it's supposed to run um, optimally without overclocking with your your processor running at stock so I'm not sure why this is taking so long, but this is taking a long time to render. Well, I mean, look at the how many pieces of grass are in this scene. And then I complicated it by putting 50 million trees in it as well. So uh, this is a really complex scene. So, And then I had to add like 50 billion particles of fog. So these little particles of fog, they're going to have to take a while. And we're only on iteration number four. And I usually like to render this to 2,000. So this, and this is five minutes for, for, for four iterations. So something is really weird with going on here with this. But, and it could be because my computer isn't uh, activated, but... All right. Well, you take care. I'm going to be having to let this render forever. And it's just a gigantic scene with a lot of gigantic stuff in it. And it's got our two uh, Genesis 9, which are pretty much the height of, uh, of our characters. Of, and then we have the... Uh, then I have this massive scene here which it's just like it's just so pixelated at this point but it will it will uh it will rectify this is the kind of thing that looks like it's going to take a day this is going slow like cpu like a cpu render and rather than a uh graphics card render but it's not this is a uh so this has gone up. This is now, um, this is, well, it's not using that much memory, but there's just a lot of geometry in here. So I think my, my RAM is running slow. So we're getting a 99, 100% utilization on the graphics cards. So... And yeah, it says the memory shared memory, so it's it's in SLI, and they're pool the memory's pooled, so the two graph twenty four gigabyte graphics cards are pooling their memory together to make forty seven point eight gigs. So uh, we have a that's all working correctly. It's just. We're still on iteration number four. So this is something else. This is really, really, really slow. There's iteration number five. So, all right, thank you for watching, and I will see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching Easy 3D TV, and I am Rex Red saying so long. Sigmund's going to say bye. Bye. 
Oh, that was nice, Sigmund. So take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And I will be back again in the next video. See you later. See you soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And have a lovely day, evening, morning, whatever it is doing in your